Have you ever experienced a burnout, even on your favorite game? If you said no, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're probably lying. Everyone experiences a burnout, and that burnout can come from a variety of different things, whether it be from a game, a job, or just being social. It's natural. And everyone always has a way to overcome that burnout. For games in particular, you might simply set down your controller or just walk away from the screen for a few days. But if you're like me, you have a specific game you go to when you get burnout from the others. My name's Poet, and today I'll be telling you about my go-to burnout recovery game, Kingdoms and Castles. I don't think this is going to be a very long video, but I really hope it sheds some light on probably one of my favorite games ever made. Kingdoms and Castles is a smaller scale game, and the best way I can describe it is a medieval version of a city simulator game. Imagine city skylines, but you're a king from the dark ages leading your people through it all. The game starts you off with a small castle and only a handful of people, and from there you have to grow your kingdom into something more powerful, fending off vikings and dragons, as well as taking care of your people and managing your resources. It's a brilliantly simple design that allows for hours of gameplay and maximum replayability value. The land you play on is randomly generated and can be refreshed so you can choose your land specifically and you can always adjust the difficulty setting as you go along so every world that you make is a different experience and I love it. The game itself is made by a company by the name of Lion Shield LLC. It's funny because before this video I never bothered to search up their studio on the internet. It's run by two dudes who apparently have a full team working on this game, and you know something? It shows. Every major update for this game adds something. They are consistently patching bugs and tweaking the game to run well. Hell, this game even has VR support now? <laughs> Dedication to the craft is something that I have come to appreciate more and more as games release in an unfinished state every year. These guys and their team Although not the largest team, it's definitely not a AAA studio, have created something that is more stable and functions way better than most AAA games do on release. Map looks like Play-Doh. Don't even have my gun out right now. I almost can't say that without laughing. That is, it's just, it's just incredible what people who actually care about their game do for their game and beyond just the work that has gone on to the game itself the soundtrack shows how much they care for the game i'm about to make a really bold claim here so i'd like to preface it by saying the game is a beautiful game it runs perfectly i haven't found any bugs in the years that i've owned it so what i'm about to say is not a knock on the gameplay it's just an addition to it I would argue that the soundtrack is what almost makes this game. It's very similar to Minecraft's soundtrack in the fact that it's very simple and there's very little sound in the game, but Kingdoms and Castles is a little quieter than Minecraft. There's very, very little sound other than crops being harvested, some thunder and rain, the howl of the snow during the winter, or the clashing of swords during a raid. Those are like the basic noises you hear while playing this game. And rather than focusing on these sounds, the game illustrates the intensity of what's going on with the music. It's basically at the foreground of every encounter in this game. Village getting raided, boom, music. Your town going through a prosperous harvest with no troubles, boom, calm tunes. A dragon sets fire to three blocks of your town while your archers take a smoke break, fat beat playing in the background. All of these pieces of music, while not overly done, elevate the gameplay, elevate your experience. You feel at peace when the music plays while your kingdom is prospering. The regal sounding music that's almost cartoonish makes you feel like a king, even if you're just sitting in a swivel chair in person. You feel the adrenaline of your troops and defenses fighting the dragon or dragons off, and the music helps to pump that adrenaline further. I could gush on and on about how simple and good this soundtrack is, but it's the simplicity, not only in its composition, but in its use that makes it perfect for
for a simple little kingdom city sim like this game. This game's been in my Steam library for years. My friend gifted it to me for one of my birthdays. I can't even remember when. I think it might have been 10 bucks at the time. I'm not even sure how much it is right now, but I just I can't get over this game. It's the game I go to when I need to step away from <laughs> the kill streaks, the, the VTOLs landing on my head, which have just been overly abundant lately. It's the game that I use to get away from the hustle and bustle of a full Discord. My friends will probably kill me when they listen to this video, but some nights I just leave the chat early and play this game offline. Sometimes I'll turn on a YouTube video just to have something playing, but most times I won't even do that. Rather, I just sit in my room with the lights off and listen to the game as it helps me forget all about my burnout. The stress from my 9 to 5, the anxiety of being a social person, and the busyness of now the holidays just melts away and this silly little kingdom world pulls me in. Sometimes, I don't think I ever want to be pulled out.